So you originally were married to Randy Brooks. Oh boy, yeah. You're doing your homework. In, in, in the 90s. Yeah. You in got the, not in the 90s. remarried. Yeah. L later on. Yeah. And you end up having two kids. I have two children, yeah. You decided to have kids kind of later on in life. Is there a reason behind that? Just life. <laughs> just, ha just having, I mean, I just wasn't, that's just what I did, yeah. I wasn't ready before that to ha have kids. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, now your husband is white. Yeah. You're, you're half white. So yeah. your, your two children, they're, uh, I guess, 75% white, 25% black. So do you teach your kids to be biracial? Or, or how, how exactly do you approach that type of thing with them? Because you, you yourself are biracial, but they're, sure. they could kind of be treated either way. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not as simple as that, though. Um, the bi biracial thing doesn't make you half and half. I mean, we say that term, and you can say that term and everything, but it doesn't make you half of this thing and half of that thing. You know what I mean? Number one, we're all human. We're all people. And we're all individuals. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you have kids, you see them come into the world with very different personalities, very distinct personalities. You come in with a lot. You're affected by a lot. Um, and I think exposing your kids to a lot, educating them and um, treating them to, to, I mean, teaching them and raising them to uh, love and respect themselves and other people and to know to understand and know their history and other people's history, I think is really important. But those are the things I think that go into making a person of, um, of strong character and understanding. But I don't think teaching them to be something, because I don't know what that even means, to be, to be biracial or to be black, you know, to be it, because everyone's so different. We, you know, right. you're, you're black, but you know, you're black and you're black and you know. Well, the reason why I ask that is because I guess the, the thing about America that I think is a little bit different than other parts of the world is that in the U.S. with, with its history of racism and so forth, uh -huh. if a person is partly black, society treats them as black. Well, if they look it. If they look it, right. Because if, if, they, look if it. they don't, they don't. Right. So, I mean, for example, you growing up, did people treat you as black, or they treat you as white, or they treat you as biracial, or you, you know what I'm I saying? People, like, I think I, I think people looked at me and they saw uh, black. I think mostly. Yeah. I mean, I have people. Certainly, people come up to me and start speaking Spanish to me a lot too. You know, or there's all kinds of you know, you, people that can see different things. But um, but yeah, generally. But I have I have a a girlfriend who uh, we're the same. Pretty much the same mix. Her mother, same complexion as my mother, um, and she does not look black. And people just laugh at her when she says she's black. I mean, they don't take her seriously at all. I and mean, then she's never treated like it. Even if she tells people, they still don't really, you know. So it's. It, I, I just find that very interesting. Is that people? Even if, even though there is that whole there's that idea that people would, if you have any black, age, but at the same time people there's a strange thing where people don't look at a lot of the time people deny it. Yeah, I mean, because for example, you have this one rapper named Logic who's who's mixed black and white, but he kind of looks white. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this whole he the album he put out recently was sort of talking about himself being black and talking about his family being black yeah. and kind of pushing that whole. Well, that I think whole it's probably a little, a little frustrating too. Yeah. You know, I mean, my daughter goes through that. My daughter doesn't doesn't look black, and I think it frustrates her. I think it frustrates her because she she wants to have a voice about things, but she feels like she's not going to be listened to, or she's not being listened to when she tries to speak up because people see something that doesn't look like what they expect. Right, because your daughter has blonde hair. Yeah. And I mean. I guess if you're looking for it, but by the texture, you can kind of you can kind of yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, a lot of But black, if you're not looking are, for it, then right. she looks kind of white. Black people are always like, "Oh, I can tell. Oh, I knew, I knew." <laughs> but but generally for her, I think it's been it's been a challenge for her because she's um, she's a little 
activist, you know, coming up. She's like, she's very impassioned about a lot of things. She has strong opinions. She's, uh, you know, she's a marcher. She gets out and with, you know, her, she has very little power as a young person, but she finds it where she can and she's very interested and she's always researching things. And, but I think when she tries to speak up, she often feels like people will not take her seriously as a, a black person speaking.